What's going on everybody? JT here coming at you with another episode of Pokemon Go News and there is a lot of cool stuff to talk about so let's dive into it. Now let's start off with the most recent news which is Trails dug into the most recent APK files and found a lot of really cool things in there. Now let's start off with the new moves that he found. He found Charm which is a fast move which we'll get into in a second and he also found Giga Impact which is going to be a charged move. Now out of the two moves I'm most interested in Charm because Charm is a fairy type move, which means we're finally getting a very fast move, which could change both PvP and PvE substantially, because beforehand, the only way to have a very fast move was having hidden power fairy, and having it on certain Pokemon was almost impossible, and it was like a random chance if you got it. So this is really cool, because it may make Pokemon like Togekiss very viable for PvE, like in raids against like dragons like Rayquaza or something like that. Maybe Togekiss could become the number one attacker for that raid. Of course, Rayquaza also has a rock type move that kind of counters it, but still, this could be really big and could change the meta up in a fun way so we don't have to constantly use the same stuff all the time. He also found some loading screen updates, which is pretty cool, but not the biggest part of this ABK find. No, he found something even bigger in here. The special quest encounter, Jirachi. That's right, we are getting the mythical Pokemon Jirachi, hopefully pretty soon. I'm going to guess probably GoFests, and I think it's going to be for all three GoFests. And if you manage to go to all three GoFests, then you're probably only going to get candy, kind of like how Celebi came out. If you already had Celebi, you didn't get a second Celebi, you just got extra candy for it. So that's what I'm assuming is going to happen. And either way, this is really cool because Jirachi is a really neat Pokemon. It looks like a star. It's a Steel and Psychic type, which is an interesting pairing, and it has the exact same stats as Mew and Celebi, and those stats are... Its maximum possible CP is 3,265. Of course, you have to get a 100% IV to get that number. And its attack is 210, its defense is 210, and its stamina is 225. Exactly the same as Mew and Celebi. But out of the three, I love Jirachi the most. Like, I love the design of him. He looks like a little star. He's the Wishmaker Pokemon, which is really fun in the lore. And yeah, I just absolutely love him. But let me know, which one's your favorite in the comments down below? Next up in the news, Adventure Week is coming back for the third time, and man, I am very excited. It's probably one of the most popular Pokemon Go events that they've ever had, and this one looks bigger than the last two, which is impressive because the last one was incredible, so let's dive into this one. The event will take place on Tuesday, June 4th, all the way until next Tuesday, June 11th, and there's a lot of features, so let's get into that. There's rock-type Pokemon like Geodude, Rhyhorn, Ammonite, Aeron, Lilip, Henrith, and many others will appear more frequently in the wild. You can hatch rock-type Pokemon such as Onix, Larvitar, Lilip, Anorith, Shieldon, and others from 2km eggs. And you can challenge Onix, the Rock Snake Pokemon, and other rock-type Pokemon in raids, which is also really cool because we're going to get into the biggest thing here. You may encounter a shiny Onix, Lilip, or Anorith if you're lucky. As you all know, I absolutely love my shiny Pokemon. It's kind of my thing, and these shiny Pokemon look pretty solid. Starting with Anorith, looks pretty good. It's a brownish color. It definitely changes, and it's noticeable, but it's not one of my favorites. When it evolves into Armaldo, it's a brownish pink color. Again, it's a good shiny, but it's not like one of my favorites by any means, but I'm happy with it. And when we move on to Lilip, Lilip turns green. It basically switches colors with evolutions, and when it evolves to Cradilly, I'm probably saying that wrong, but when it evolves to that, it turns pink, and it's pretty solid. I like it. And then, my favorite out of all of them is Shiny Onyx. It turns a yellowish-green color, looks really solid, but when it evolves to Shiny Steelix, oh, it turns gold. I love golden shinies, and I would love to get a lucky one of these. Hit a lucky aura around the golden snake would be amazing, and plus... Steelix gets a Mega Evolution in the future, and it looks really good. Keeps the golden color, has a lot of crystals coming off of it. It's going to be a really, really good shiny, and I would love to get a Lucky of that, too. Just imagine a Lucky Shiny Mega Steelix. Like, oh, we're thinking in the future right now, but I can't wait for that when it finally comes. The bonuses for this event are also really good. You earn four times Buddy Candy when you walk with your Buddy Pokemon, which is awesome if you have a Pokemon that comes out of a 10 kilometer egg. It takes five kilometers normally to get a candy, but now it's only gonna take 1.25 kilometers, which is nothing. It's basically a two kilometer Pokemon when you walk with them. And this is really good if you have Gibble. That means there's way more candies for your guard chomps, and I know a lot of people out there are kind of struggling. My, myself have not gotten a Gibble yet. I might actually trade for it for this event, which kind of goes against my rules, but 
I kind of want it for this event, so hopefully we can find one before, but if not, we're going to have to trade. Also, visiting a new Pokestop will earn you 10 times XP on your first spin of each photo disc. Which is great for all you guys who love extra EXP. I see a lot of people just going to like new cities and towns just to get EXP from this. And lastly, trainers who have Adventure Sync activated and walk 50 kilometers will earn 50,000 Stardust and 15 rare candies. Now, that may seem like a lot, but I do that literally every single week. I go well over 50 kilometers because I just walk everywhere. So I'm very excited to get 50,000 Stardust and 15 rare candies just guaranteed. And get out there and walk. I know it's rough, especially if you live in Florida right now and it's really hot, but just try to do it for this week because you're going to get a really good bonus for it. And the final bit of information we have is that we are going to get specially themed field research tasks for this event, which means we'll probably get ourselves at least an Anorith, a Lilip, and an Onyx task for those increased chances of getting the shiny. Plus we're getting them from raids, we're going to see them in the wild. This just seems like an amazing event with awesome bonuses, and I, for one, think this is probably going to be one of the best, if not the best, events of the year. Of course, there's plenty of time left in this year, so maybe they'll outdo this one, but this is a solid, solid event. But only time will tell if it actually is good as we're reading, because, you know, we don't know until it finally goes live, and this may not be as good as we thought, but fingers crossed it turns out just as well as we hope it does. Now, there is one little thing I want to add to this Adventure Week that would make this event just so much cooler, at least personally for me and hopefully for some of you out there. Niantic, if you're listening, if you can make it happen, I would love you forever if you just put in the Crystal Onyx in this event, because it's in the lore, it was in the anime, and it's such a cool Pokemon. Like, make it super rare as well. Like, you think Shiny Onyx is hard, Crystal Onyx is like a one in a million chance, but it would be so cool to have that in there because we already have like special Pikachus with hats and stuff. We have Eevees with flower crowns and it looks like we may be getting Stantler with Jingle Bells. Please give us the Crystal Onyx. It doesn't even have to evolve. In fact, make it so it can't evolve. So you don't have to add like the Crystal Steelix and the Crystal Mega Steelix, even though those would be super cool. But honestly, I would love it because I've been wanting things like this for a while. I've mentioned this before on the channel. Like, give us the Golden Pseudo Wudo, give us the Crystal Onyx, give us the Pink Butterfree. These super rare things that make shinies rare, but not as cool as hitting one of these trophies. But that's just a personal thing I'd hope to add, but I definitely doubt they're going to do it. And the last little bit of news I wanted to cover is that we're getting Slack Off Community Day on Saturday, June 8th, and it's got some decent bonuses to it. Obviously, we're going to get Shiny Slack Off, which is really cool. We're going to get the three-hour lures. We're going to have a quarter egg hatching distance, which is really cool, especially during this time because it's going to be during the Adventure Week, which means that all the uh, eggs are going to be point... 2-5 kilometers for your 2Ks, so that'd be a great time to try to get your shiny, like, Onyx or something from that, so that'd be neat. And then we're gonna have the exclusive move, which of this recording, we don't know what it is. Now, there's a lot of theories, a lot of people hoping for a fast move like Scratch, which makes slacking really good all of a sudden. And then there's a lot of things pointing to that it's gonna be Body Slam, which is good because he gets stab bonus, but... He still only has Yawn, which does no damage and doesn't do anything at this point, though there may be something in the future that may be teasing that Yawn might be actually doing something, but as of right now, it's kind of useless and it doesn't do anything. But yeah, all in all, I'm excited for this event because I like Shiny Slackoth. It's purple, he looks pretty cool, and when he evolves into Vigoroth, it turns slightly yellower, and, you know, if the move isn't so great, Vigoroth is still good for PvP. It has some solid moves to it, and obviously if you get a good statted one, it'll be nice to flex that in there for PvP. And then, finally, Shiny Slack King is kind of underwhelming, to be honest with you. It gets a slightly dirtier mane instead of it being white. It's like a yellowish color, and I think he's a little lighter, but all in all... It's not that great of a shiny. It's always sad when they ever make a shiny that's just barely noticeable. And honestly, if you showed me them, like, one at a time over time, I probably wouldn't know which one's the shiny, which is sad to say. But, yeah, I mean, again, I love Community Day because I like getting out there and hunting for the shinies and just hanging out with everybody because it's such a fun atmosphere. But this one's definitely not going to be as exciting as, like, you know, Beldum Day was or Charmand or Tyranitar, but I'm still happy for it. And with all that amazing news out of the way, this is going to be the end of the video. And if you've enjoyed it and found it informative, please smash that like button for me. Show me some love. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the little bell icon so you know when I upload. And comment down below. What are you most excited about? The possibilities of Jirachi? The new shinies that are on the way? Please let me know in the comments down below. And I will see you in the next one.